Slack is one of the most useful communication platforms out there, especially if you're using it for work. And in this video, I wanted to show you exactly how to use it if you're new to using Slack. Now, the easiest way to get started with Slack is just by going to slack.com on your computer. They do have a mobile version for Android and iPhones as well. And I have covered that in a different video. So you can watch this after this video, they all sync up and they have a desktop for Windows and for Mac, which looks identical to what I'm gonna show you in this video on the web. And I'm gonna show you the completely free version of Slack. The way Slack makes money is with these paid upgrades, but you can get started for free. The biggest limitation to the free version is how many messages you have access to. And the paid version also has a better voice and video call built in for up to 15 teammates, where the free one only has one-to-one -one voice and video calls. Once I show you inside of Slack, you'll see why it may be a much better way instead of using emails or other ways to communicate with your team members at work. Let's go ahead and try for free. We'll just click over here. And even if someone invited you to Slack, you still need to create an account for yourself when you click the invite link. So it's gonna bring you to the same page. I'm gonna go ahead and create one from scratch. Now, as long as you use the same email, if you got an invite to that email, you may see your workspaces down here. Your other option is creating your own workspace. So if you're setting this up yourself at your job, your own company, you could just go through the setup process here and I'm gonna skip adding teammates at this step. I'll show you how to do all of this once you're inside of Slack. And I'm gonna use Slack on the browser here. So it's all going to take place on the web. I won't have to download anything. This is basically Slack. So I'm gonna briefly show you what's going on and what you're looking at. And then we'll go through step-by-step -step on some of the things you need to know. So the very first thing I typically do since I just created this and I'm the only one here is I need to add team members. So if you did this yourself and you set this up, you will need to add teammates. If someone invited you, they will add the teammates and you will see all your teammates over here listed below. So I'll go ahead and type in someone else that I want to invite. You just put in their email here and they will get invited. When someone sends you an invite via email, this is exactly what that email will look like and you would just press join if you're getting invited to someone else's workspace or someone at your job invited you. So making sure all the right team members are inside of your Slack here is the first thing that you would need to do. And there are options also if you have multiple different businesses, for example, you could have multiple different workspaces. So the one I created is here, but if I was to join another one, I could add a workspace and signing to a different one. So let's say I had my own company and I had a job, I could jump in between a workspace I created and another one that I got invited to and it will show up on this side as two different workspaces. But for this video, we'll just work inside of one workspace. The next thing that we need to know is what channels are and how they work. Basically, the main way Slack works is all conversations inside of Slack, all chat conversation, notes, and audio and video conversations are typically organized in channels. And each channel will have a name to the channel. So by default, I have a general channel. The website channel is what I created when I started this project and this workspace. There's a random one and I could always add a new channel. So let me just go to the general channel to show you. Each channel starts with a hashtag here, and that's just the way channels are organized. Now, typically there are public channels. So this is a public channel. You'll see the hashtag sign here before the channel name and they're private channels, which I will show you how to create. With public channels, it's public meaning everyone in this organization could see what's going on in this channel. So I invited the second person and you could see up here, it shows two people could see every chat that happens inside of here. But that's the reason why sometimes you may want to create a private channel. If you only need to have two or three people inside of a channel and not the whole organization needs to know what's going on in there, that's what a private channel is. So let's go ahead and create a channel first and I'm gonna create a new channel here. And I'm gonna create a marketing channel here and you could leave a description as well. And this is the difference between public and private. If I left this alone right now, it's going to make a public channel. So anybody in my organization is going to see what's going on.
but I could turn this on and now I have a private channel. So since I already have some public ones, I'll make this private. You could also share with people outside of this entire organization, but that is one of the paid premium upgrades, which I won't do here. I'll just go ahead and create this channel. And because this is private, no one is in this channel but the person that created it. So you do need to invite other people. So I'll invite someone else, which is the other account I invited here, and I'll press add. So now, anytime you jump into a channel, just to confirm, you could go up here and see exactly who has access to see the information in this channel. So if you have a private channel, you do need to make sure you didn't invite someone you don't want to have access and read your messages. You could always jump in between these different conversations. So I'll show you exactly what happens inside of each channel and your communication options, but I'll show you one more thing here. There is also direct messages. Typically, one-on-one -on -one conversations could take place in a direct message. This basically works exactly like a text message with one other person. So you would go to that person's profile here and you could go ahead and type in a message here and just press enter and that person will get your message. So private one-on-one -on -one conversations could take place inside of direct messages. You don't actually have to create a channel for those even though you could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation inside of a private channel as well. So I typically like to think of this as just one-on-one -on -one text messages, and I like to think of these as group text messages, the private ones for exactly who I want in that group message, and the public ones for basically everyone on my contact list, or in this case, my organization. Now let's jump back inside of a public channel here and let me show you everything that you could do inside of a channel. So this channel will always include everyone. This is a great spot for announcements and team-wide conversation. So what you could do here is you could leave any kind of a message and you could press enter. So I'm on my account here, so it's gonna show my name here and my message. And besides just doing a normal message, with any message that you send here, you have options to basically make it bold, italic, strike through. You could turn it into a link here and add a link if you wanna send someone somewhere else and you have basic formatting options. You also could press this plus sign if you wanted to add things to this. So you could upload attachments directly from your computer. So I'll just go ahead and add an upload here. And this is just a image I have on my computer and I'm going to go ahead and send. And now anyone inside of this channel could download it. You could also click share file from here and share it with other channels, even private ones or directly inside of a one-on-one -on -one direct message. Very useful options here with attachments. And when you type out a message, you also have this little arrow over here, which lets you send a message at a later date. So if you're doing this after hours, it's kind of useful to not send it right away and schedule it as a later message. Now, once a message is received inside of a channel or even inside of a direct message, you have a bunch of options available here. So if it was a to-do, you could go ahead and check it off here and it will get this icon over here. You could also react to it in a different way. You could also share this message, again, the way I showed you inside of different channels or inside of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And you have a bunch of other ones. So you could, for example, if this is not related to you, just turn off notifications. You could go ahead and pin this. So if you pin it to the channel, it just shows up right on top so everyone could see it. You see, it changes the color of it. You could go ahead and save this item too if you wanna to refer to it and find it in an easier way. And you could also get a reminder about this message. So if you didn't have time right now, you could make sure in 20 minutes that you get a reminder. You see, I got a little reminder icon so I could get back to it later. And a very useful option is this at sign when you send a message. So if you wanna get someone's attention, make sure you press this and then you put their name. It will give you an option here to put their name here. And then when you type something and you send this message, they will actually get a little notification that you're trying to get their attention. Because if you don't do that, pretty much everyone's gonna get the same result inside of this channel. This way you're just talking to one specific person. Even though everyone in this channel is gonna see it, you still will send this person a special notification. Now, one of my favorite things with Slack, which works a lot better than email, is the search bar up here. So with Slack, the power of searching all messages, all files, and pretty much every conversation is really powerful, much better than the results you get out of an email. 
So if I type in anything, I could search entire messages, files and more, and it's going to show me any message with whatever my search term was up here. And I have a ton of ways to sort it by date, how people reacted to it, who it was from and what type of channel it was in here or if it was in a direct conversation. Same with files, same with channels, same with people. This search bar is extremely powerful. One of the main reasons why I use Slack. And let's go inside of a direct message because another powerful option you have inside of Slack is one-on-one -on -one video or audio conversations. Call right here, this icon, let me press it to show you what happens. This only shows up after someone accepts the invite into the workspace. And basically this is a video call and it's an audio call. So as long as you allow access to your microphone and your camera and you answer this call, it will bring you to this workspace where you could go ahead and mute yourself. You could turn on your camera, you could screen share and you could invite other people here as well. If you have any issues inside of settings, you can make sure your microphone, your speaker and your camera are all working correctly. If you've used any type of video conferencing platforms, that will look very familiar to you. So that's gonna show up like this once you make a call. Again, it could be audio only by leaving your camera off or making a video conference by activating your camera. That's the icon up here. And the last thing I'll show you here is if you click your profile icon here, you could go ahead and change your status. So if you don't wanna be showing up as active, you could change that here and set yourself as away. You could also go ahead and change your notification settings. So if you don't want anyone to bother you till tomorrow, you could go ahead and set that over here. And there are more things on their profile and preferences that you could set up including adding a profile picture and so on. And that's your crash course in using Slack. I recommend watching the mobile version because this syncs up with the same account. So you could send messages on your phone, on the Slack app, and then you'll see them over here once you get to your desktop. I hope you found this useful. Please give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time.